Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great, hanging outside with the puppy and doing some things, playing with my plants, looking at what needs a repot. And I was adjusting the drip and getting ready to fertilize my palm trees. And I was looking at this one and thinking, why have I not talked about this palm before? This is an amazing plant. Let's talk about it. Really? Really? We're going to do this right now? Let's not chew on the tripod. No, no. He has an obsession with this tripod, as you can see. And what he's done over here, he just likes to do. Ugh. Puppies being puppies. No, Turbo, go get your toy. Why don't you, yeah, why don't you go get one of your toys? Hey. Hey. Do, do, do. Look, toy. <laughs> okay, look, toy. There we go, toy. Chew on your toy. There we go, that's better. Kimmy Doria Hooperiana. It's kind of hard to see. I think that this would be best to film in front of just a flat background, but I don't really have a flat background. So I'll do my best to try and get some up close shots so we can get a better look at how beautiful this palm is. These are sometimes called the Hooper's Palm, also the Maya Palm, the Mayan Palm. I see it under both names and there's not a ton of information out there about them. That's because these really didn't come into well, I don't know when they came into cultivation. They were first described in 1992 by Lewis Hooper, who passed away in 2017. I'll probably call it the Hooper's Palm in this video, just a memoriam to the person who discovered the palm tree. These are fantastic houseplants. I get asked quite often what my favorite houseplant palm trees are, and it always comes up as sort of a toss up between your typical, like, Kentia palms, those are great, but really expensive. And then there's other Camadurias, which do well in the house, like the Sufritzii and the Microspatics, but they have a lot of issues that come with them that this one does not. And I think that it looks a lot nicer than those two other type of bamboo palms as well. For starters, as far as care's concerned, you just grow it like a house plant. Okay, that's not all that useful. Consistently moist soil, though they seem to be fine with drying out for a little while as well, as long as the air isn't too dry. They like a moderate amount of light, not direct light, but filtered light, low light, probably okay. Might need to bump it up to more light if you notice it's not growing, nothing's going on with the plant. But outdoors, especially low light, shade, they seem totally fine with it. I get better growth outdoors with them when they get just a little bit of morning sun, not too much, just a smidge and shade, filtered light from a tree above them throughout the rest of the day. You don't need any sort of special potting blend, just an all-purpose potting mix that drains well and holds on to some moisture should be fine for them. I do think that they would appreciate something that has some more organic content to it than just a regular like peat blend. So something with some compost or earthworm castings would be best. Point though is that not too picky, pretty simple palm. I'd consider the growth rate on them to be moderate, moderate to even fast for a Camaduria palm. Outdoors during the summer, much more quick. Inside, average household temperature around 70 or so with I'd say a medium amount of light, maybe a little bit more on the moderate to slow side as far as how often they throw out those new fronds. During the growing season, I've just been fertilizing with palm gain. That's usually my go-to palm fertilizer. Most of the palm trees seem to appreciate it. I also, uh, last year, had some trouble getting a hold of palm gain and just used plant tone and it worked well too. Because like I said, pretty simple palm tree. They're not too fussy. For a palm that I would consider to be a great houseplant palm, these don't get too terribly large. Anywhere from 10 to 17 feet is what to be expected. I know that's a really broad range. So there's not a ton of information, like I mentioned before, as far as just accounts of people growing these. They're not super common, though they are gaining popularity, which I'm really happy about. Imagine the 17 foot is probably going to be more what you see outdoors in their preferred climate and preferred conditions. Indoors, 10 to 12 feet would seem more reasonable. And of course, eventually they'll want to get as tall as they want to get, as tall as they're programmed to get. But indoors, that's going to take longer. So you get more longevity out of this particular palm than maybe you would something like a Sofritzii bamboo palm, which can get quite large, quite fast. They get leggy, they're prone to fungal diseases and pests. While those are fun houseplant palms, 
they also, or it's, it's a mixed bag. The Mayan palms or Hooper's palms, they are nowhere near as prone to the different fungal problems that those other bamboo palms are prone to. Their leaves, the fronds, the pinnae really, are much more thick and dense. So they have a little bit more resistance to cold and to wind and to uh, drafts, not as prone to spider mites and insects. But overall, just a much more pleasant and easy to grow house plant. And I think they're beautiful. They have a thicker, I wanna say cane, but those are the trunks on them, of around an inch in diameter, which I think looks nice. The rings are spaced out further on them. The fronds are longer, more arched. Pinnae are spaced a little bit further apart and they just, in my opinion, look more graceful and more pleasing to the eye. And from what I gather, these are fairly, relatively easy to germinate from seed. The inflorescence on these, it's absolutely beautiful. It is a bright, vibrant orange that comes out from those trunks, arches down, gets covered in the seeds. It's really striking and vibrant. I've been growing this particular palm for quite some time now, and there have only been two things that have stood out to me that bother me. They're not even really big issues either. The first one is that I have to acclimate this to coming outside very, very slowly. If you follow my channel, you might remember in the springtime I brought this out and stuck it in what I thought was basically pure shade, but it still had some scorch on the leaves from the morning sun that barely hit it, but it, it, it hit it and it was like, no, absolutely not. I'm gonna start to bleach out. Photo oxidation, just ramp it on several fronds. I ended up pruning those off. A lot of the fronds that are on here are all brand new to the summer because, well, it was a learning moment that this plant really does need to go into basically dark conditions when you've had them inside in very low light. So now I know, really, really dark conditions and to very gradually bump it up, which is true of a lot of palms, like the Eureka palms. They tend to photo oxidize very, very quickly. That's the bleaching out, where if it's too much sun, they get leaf or sun scorch on them. So that's not even a big deal. If you're not moving your palms in and out, then who cares, right? Doesn't matter. The other thing is that it holds onto its old sheaths around the crown for a really long time. You can see here that brown piece right there. That's an old leaf sheaf. It's an old leaf base to a leaf that used to come out. And then that leaf comes off and that dries up. And on a lot of palms, those will start to pop off over a while. This one, it holds on to them. So just before I filmed this video, I pulled two off, which you really shouldn't do but they are very long. So it's going all the way from there, all the way up here. And I was like, that's, just, it didn't look nice. So I pulled it off and that's why there's yellow on that trunk. That will start to green up some more in a few days. It's already starting to get greener than it was. And I'm not saying that you should do that, that you should pull those sheaths off, but if it bothers you, I, you know, give them a month or two, which is what I did. And then maybe if they're loose enough to go ahead and pop right off, then do that. They did, they just popped right off. So they were ready to go just, they don't fall quite the same as they would on a larger palm like this. Adenidia has one that's going to be ready to go here really soon. As soon as that piece down there, see right there where it's a little bit yellow, when that starts to turn brown, that entire frond, if it weren't leaning against this light, would just fall right off. Self-cleaning is what we call that. And while I would probably consider this a self-cleaning palm, it would just take it a long time to do that cleaning because they, like I said, they hold on to those for a long time. Just a thing of aesthetics. It's not really a big deal. And then as I said before, I really would just grow this like I would any other house plant. Keep it away from drafts, give it the light that it wants, keep the soil consistently moist. If it dries out some, really not a big deal unless you live in a super arid climate or maybe your house is very, very warm, like over 75 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Last winter, I kept this in my garage where it was fairly cool. I mean, it dropped into the 40s and 50s and I just splashed water on it about once a month and it got through the winter, no problem. It was totally fine. I believe these are hardy to, uh, I think, upper 20s Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. I don't know, that's an area I haven't dug too deeply because in zone 6B, it gets very cold here. So keeping it outside all year is not even an option for me. And I believe where Hooper discovered this palm was somewhere, I think Veracruz, Mexico might be what I read online at an altitude of, I think, 1,000 to 2,500 feet somewhere in there, which is actually a fairly narrow range, but it still seems to be a pretty versatile plant. Sometimes when a plant is in a more narrow range, as far as their altitude and their spread from where you'll find the plant, you won't have as much versatility for how you can grow them. But this one, it's, it doesn't seem to care. As long as it doesn't get too much light or too much cold, it seems 
totally fine, totally happy. This is a very, very, very easy to grow palm tree. It's not going to throw the types of fits that you get with your majesty palms, for example. Majesty palms are horrible houseplants. I've said it before, I don't like them. They're pretty, they're produced in mass, and I just, I feel like they set people up for failure oftentimes, unless you have a really, really bright room with lots of warmth and humidity, then they tend to not flourish. You might get them by in other conditions, but they won't flourish. Whereas this, it just, it grows. It looks nice, it's pretty, it's elegant, has a similar elegance to a Kentia palm, but you still get some of the stringiness because they have those thin canes on them, which I'm okay with. I actually like those canes. Not canes, trunks. They're ringed trunks is what I should call them. Those are nice to have inside. I was thinking that it might be time to do a repot on this one because it's been in this 14 inch container down there for a while, for a few years, but it seems fine. Typically with palm trees, they can stay in a smaller container for a much longer time than other house plants can, other tropical plants, whatever you want to call them. I gauge my repotting based on the health of the plants. So if I'm watering and watering the plant and it's not staying hydrated, probably time for a repot. If there's roots coming off the top, and the bottom and or the bottom, time for a repot. Or if I'm seeing a lot of nutrient deficiencies and uh, just supplemental fertilizing isn't taking care of it, or if I'm having to do it more frequently to help keep the fronds nice and green, help keep the growth healthy, then it's probably time for a repot to get some fresh mix. Oh, and the last point, isn't it pretty? It's just a nice looking palm. I think that they're absolutely beautiful. Finding palm trees, especially ones that get a trunk on them, that'll have those fun rings on them inside the house. Not always that easy if you don't have those bright, sunny rooms with you know a good amount of warmth. Like Adenidias, these palm trees, huge pain to keep inside. I do not like growing these indoors. When I, my house used to get more sun before the trees got really big, not as big of a deal, but uh, it's, no, not my favorite. Finicky, they need the warmth, they need the humidity if you wanna keep them looking nice. This right here, Though a different aesthetic, I still think a much more pleasing one to have in the house. We'll I'll have different preferences there as far as aesthetics are concerned, but I just think they look nice. It's just a pretty palm. It's cute and so easy to grow. Last thing, price point and availability. These palm trees are not that widely grown as of yet. Hopefully that's going to change sometime soon. I am starting to see them more commonly available online and at stores. On a scale of Kentia palm price to Majesty palm price, I'd rate it a meh. That wasn't helpful. For one this size, we'd probably pay around one to $200. That would be my guess. Normally I would say that that price will come down as they become more available and more popular, but with the house plant craze that's going on right now, I don't really know if that's the case but you can get these in smaller sizes. I see them around online sometimes where they'll be anywhere from like two to three feet tall and maybe around 40 to $70. But again, the prices go all over the place for them. I consider it worth it because it's not a palm that's just going to die and get thrown away like a Majesty Palm. It's more of an investment plant because they're so easy to grow. They should last a long, long, long time until they outgrow your home, until they get too big for the ceilings you should be able to keep these in size. And because they're a clustering palm, a clumping palm, they put out lots of growth from down below. Each trunk that comes up will put out more trunks from the base. As the big trunks get too big, you can always just prune them off at the base down below and let the smaller trunks keep going. So potentially could have this inside as long as you want to, as long as you stay on top of that, pruning those trunks down all the way to the base. Because once you cut a palm at the main stem and the crown, it's basically done. It's not likely that it's going to re-sprout. It's, it's worth taking that risk if you're trying to fight some sort of infection, but there aren't plants where you can just prune the trunks down to keep them smaller. They typically don't appreciate that. So you just cut the big trunk off when it gets way too big, let the smaller ones take over. Maybe do a division over time because they'll start to have a big bare spot in the middle. Okay, but that's it. What do we think? Do we love it? Yes, no? I hope so. I love it. I think they're fantastic. So that's probably pretty obvious here. They're just nice looking palms. They don't need bright intense light. They don't need extreme heat or humidity. They don't need to be saturated with water all of the time. They aren't nutrient hogs. They aren't gonna be prone to the fungal infections and the pests and diseases like you find with the more common bamboo type palms. And they're less prone to the browning tips on the fronds because they have that thicker pinnae. 
the thicker pieces that come out from the center there. There's a heavier cuticle on those leaves, they're more leathery, so they have some more resistance to lower humidity. They aren't going to be like some of the more common palms that we find around at the big box stores where if you don't have a good amount of humidity, then they just start to get covered in those little brown tips. They get some, but not that many. Not anywhere to a point like a lot of the others do. All right, that's it. The Maya palm, Mayan palm, Hooper's palm, Hooperiana. Excellent palm tree. Comment down below, what are some of your experiences with this palm or what are some of your favorite houseplant type palms? Because again, I'm kind of basing this video off of that. It's just a plant I would love more people to grow. It would be so nice to see this more popular in cultivation and out at the nurseries and places for people who want something that looks nice in the house but isn't going to be a lot of maintenance and not just die on you like a majesty palm might do. Majesty palms are pretty, don't get me wrong. I did a whole video on them and I think I made it pretty clear why I feel the way I do about them. I'm just saying that these are better. Much more expensive, not as easy to get a hold of. If you can find one and it's the right price point for you, I'd nab it up because it's a plant that you'll be able to have around for a long time. Really something you'll be able to enjoy and appreciate. Having house plants that live a long time is so nice. You can pass them down through generations. I don't know if this is quite to that extreme of longevity, but Potentially, if you keep it pruned down and keep dividing it up, then I don't see why you couldn't have one of these for decades. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.